what is up everybody and a lot of people in their minds think that 2014 was a very disappointing year when it comes to video games i don't necessarily agree with that i actually thought it was a decent year not the best but it was decent but does that mean that there weren't any disappointments the year at all no of course not and i would like to share with you all my disappointments for the gaming year of 2014. I hope you enjoy and let me know what you think. Now this particular game should not be a shocker at all because it is on a lot of people's most disappointing games of the year list and in some cases some people it's on their worst games of the year list. Yes I am talking about Destiny. Destiny was one of my most disappointing games of the year. But it's not going to be for the reasons that you're probably thinking about. My reasons actually have nothing to do with the actual game itself. Because the actual game itself, in my opinion, is actually quite good. The first person shooter mechanics are really good. The graphics are really, really, really good. The multiplayer, in my opinion, is actually really fun, especially when you play it with your friends. I remember playing this game a lot this year with my friends, and those were some of the most fun times I've ever had playing a multiplayer game. And I would never trade those experiences in for anything else. They were a lot of fun. Even when the game was actually not performing in our favor. It was just still a lot of fun to play with your friends. So yeah, and I understand that the game lacks a story. I understand that completely. You know the whole, I don't have time to explain, why I don't have time to explain line that everybody talks about. It's a really good line because it pretty much, it actually it's the funny thing is it makes fun of the game within the game. I, I don't know if Bungie realized that when they put that line in. Maybe maybe they didn't expect people to actually take that line and run with it. And I understand that the one of the, the main issues that people have with this game is the lack of story. And, and that is an issue. But to me, I think the other stuff in the game is fun enough that you could get away with not having an extravagant story. And I would also like to point out that it's not like Bungie didn't have anything ready for this game in regards to story information. Because a lot of what is in the Destiny universe and the Destiny lore is on these Grimoire cards that you pick up during the game. And if you actually go on Bungie.net and look at some of these cards, there's a lot, a lot of information on weapons, characters, the universe... There's a lot of stuff there, and I remember looking at stuff, and my the first thought that popped into my head was, why the hell is any of this not in the actual game? So yes, I definitely agree. They should have put this stuff in the game. But I still think they should get credit where credit is due, because they, did, they do have stuff to use. They just didn't put it in the game, but we have to at least admit that they had something. Now, whether or not they're going to save that stuff for future DLC, which to me is not really a good thing, because you're basically saying, okay, you want to see more story? Do you want to see all this information play out and stuff like that? You have to give us more money. That's not really a good thing, but maybe they'll use that all in the future. I don't know. But none of that is why I am putting this game on my disappointing, most disappointing games list. The reason I'm putting it on is because of Bungie themselves. Now, if any of you have ever played Halo back in the day, Bungie was well known for being one of the most fan-friendly developers. As in, they would actually take fan suggestions and actually implement them in their future games. Like, for example, the Zombies game mode in Halo 
was originally created by fans, and they were played in Halo 2 in custom games. I remember playing that when Halo 2 was still going. And I remember seeing that game, it was a lot of fun, and I remember thinking, man, this is actually a creative idea come that is actually brought up by a fan. So Bungie saw that, and they were like, you know what? That's a real cool idea. We're going to put that in Halo 3 and make that an actual game mode, and they did. They actually took a fan-created game mode and put it in the next game. How many developers would you have even think about would do something like that? It's almost unheard of in a lot of cases. And not only that, in Halo 3, gr there was a game mode called Griffball that was another fan-created game, and Bungie actually turned that into a matchmaking playlist. And not only that, Halo 3 also introduced Forge mode, which lets you create your own maps. Bungie would take these fan-created maps and put them in the multiplayer rotation, so that you wouldn't always be playing on the same maps over and over and over again. That's awesome. What the hell happened to that Bungie? I would love to know because the Bungie that created Destiny is not the Bungie that I remember. And here's why. It seems like this Bungie is trying to take any kind of fun out of this game that, that players are finding. Like, for example, the Loot Caves. Now, Destiny can be a grind. You have to grind for materials. You have to grind to get the yeah, get the materials, the sh the ascendant shards and ascendant energies to upgrade your gear. So people were finding these loot caves to not really shorten the time, but maybe get better luck at dropping engrams and finding better stuff. Bungie saw that and they immediately patched these caves and they were quoted as saying that we did not envision you playing our game this way so we're going to basically shut you down now I'm sorry but my philosophy is, is that if I spend 60 bucks or more on your game then I'm going to play it how I freaking want to play it if I want to sit in front of a cave and just shoot 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 at enemies over and over and over again to grind for materials and grind for engrams who the hell are you to tell me no I mean really I paid money to play your game I will play it the way I want to outside of actually hacking the system and all that stuff and it's, it, it, it didn't just start with that it also ended up happening with the strike and raid mode bosses where people would find exploits to make these fights easier, and then Bungie goes, okay, well now we're just going to make it harder. That, that, that's not an answer, in my opinion. You're, you're basically... If, if other players find exploits and stuff, you should fix the exploits, not just make it harder for people. And speaking of raid, why the hell is there no raid matchmaking? C can someone explain that to me? Why the hell there's no raid matchmaking? I mean, imagine this. Imagine playing Call of Duty. And, okay, play Team Deathmatch, there's matchmaking. Oh, you want to play Domination? Oh, nope, you have to go in with a full party or else you can't play. Or, you won't be matched up with anybody. Does that make a lot of sense to you? No, it really shouldn't. But, that's what, that's what Destiny is. It's got all these multiplayer game modes that are matchmaking except for Raid. Raid, you actually have to go in with a party. Really doesn't make a lot of sense. But then again, also taking away a game mode that launched with the game, taking it away for an undisclosed amount of time, also doesn't make a lot of sense. And I'm talking about the salvage game mode. There's a trophy and achievement attached to this game mode. But Bungie only had help for the first two to three days of the game's launch, and then they took it away for, like, weeks. It was a fun game mode. I love playing that game mode with friends. It really, really displayed how awesome teamwork triumphed over player skill. 
I mean, me and the friends I played with, we're not the best players in the game, but we ended up winning a lot of these matches because we had better teamwork and communication. So when Bungie just took that game mode away, it, that didn't make a lot of sense to me. I mean, would you want to have the most amount of game modes available for your game, especially when it's a multiplayer-driven game? I mean, I would think, but you know what? What do I know? What do I know, right? So, yeah, that is why Destiny is on my list here. Not because of the actual core game itself. It's because of Bungie. I don't know what the hell has happened to Bungie. I hope the old Bungie returns one day, but we'll have to wait and see. Now, this one right here is probably going to be a big shocker to a lot of you. But yes, I am putting Dragon Age Inquisition on this list. Now, before I get into anything, I would like to stress the point. I'm not putting it on this list because of the actual game itself. Because the actual game itself is actually really, really good. The The world, the worlds are really, really big and vast. The graphics are really good. The gameplay is really solid. The story is actually pretty good. It's, it's not the amazing story that I hoped it would be, but it's still a really, really damn good story. But that is not why I am putting it on this list. I am putting it on this list for one major reason. When I play this game, outside of dialogue conversations, and when I'm actually in combat, I don't feel like I'm playing Dragon Age. Now, before anybody comes in here and basically tells me I don't know what I'm talking about, I don't have a lot of experience with Dragon Age, I have a ton of experience with Dragon Age. I've platinumed Origins and Dragon Age 2 on PS3, and I've played both games on the 360 as well. I have a, quite a bit of experience with Dragon Age. I may not be a hardcore fanboy like a lot of people are out there, like they know like deep into the universe and deep into the lore. I'm not that. But to say I have no experience with Dragon Age would be completely false. But most of the time when I played this game, I didn't feel like I was playing Dragon Age. I felt like I was playing a good third-person version of Skyrim. Now, that doesn't sound like a bad thing, because Skyrim was a really good game. But if I wanted to play Skyrim, I would play Skyrim. When I pop in a Dragon Age game, I want to feel like I'm playing Dragon Age. And... A lot of times, I don't feel like I'm playing Dragon Age. Most of the time, when I'm playing Inquisition, I'm doing these random side quests, picking up all these loot, and all these materials, and I, it, it's really, it, gets, it gets really, really repetitive. And I can't tell you how many times I'm sitting in my chair, doing this, and I'm thinking to myself, this does not feel like Dragon Age at all. Now, once again, that, that doesn't mean that it's bad. It, it's just kind of disappointing in my eyes because I did not expect this game to be like this. I also didn't expect this game to actually have quite a bit of graphical bugs and glitches that it has. Now, that might be shocking to you because nobody's really going around talking about bugs and glitches in this game, but there are, and, and people want to make fun of other games that have come out this year for their graphical bugs and issues and all that stuff. This game has a lot of them. I can't tell how many times I've fast traveled to a camp and the requisitions officer would be floating. Now, I know some of you have probably seen this because I've shared pictures of this actually happening multiple times. Sometimes my party would be floating a little bit or their knees would actually be bending upward. And it's, it, it's not like this just happened every once in a while. It happened countless times. Um, almost every time I would transport to a camp, the requisitions officer would be floating. One time she was in the ground. <laughs> it, it's just amazing how many times I saw that. Now, granted, Dragon Age is now an open world game. And open world games tend to have more of these types of issues. 
But in my opinion, if you're going to bash one open world game for these kind of issues and run a campaign basically riding that game into the ground for these issues, but you want to ignore these same issues that are in a game like this, to me, that's wrong. That is completely wrong and unfair. So, but, you know, I can ignore little things like that in the games. I've ignored them in a lot of other open world games that I've played. But there were kind of other issues that I had in the game. Another issue that was pretty disappointing to me is the characters in this game are nowhere near as interesting to me as they were in, say, Dragon Age Origins. In Dragon Age Origins, I loved just about every single party member. I loved every single party member that was available to you in that game. So much so that I actually enjoyed wanting to go to the camp and then talking to all of your party members, learning about them. Just, yeah, just learning about them, just having conversations with them because their characters were really good. Like Dragon Age Origins had Morgan, Alistair, Wynn, uh, Sten could be pretty entertaining a lot of the times, and Ogryn. And then, of course, the dog. <laughs> I actually have a whole video up on my channel just basically going through all the dog conversations. It's just a lot of fun. Inquisition doesn't have that. It doesn't even have the dog at all, which is really disappointing to me because I, I love animals. And that was one of the cool things about Dragon Age was that you could have a dog in your party. Your own dog that you could name. Inquisition doesn't have it for some reason. Even Dragon Age 2 had that. Albeit, I think that was a pre-order DLC if I'm not mistaken. I don't remember. Someone can correct me if I'm wrong there. But at least it was in there. And, but a lot of times, I don't feel like talking to many of your party members in Inquisition. Like, I, in my opinion, I don't know what they did to Varric. Varric was a lot more entertaining in Dragon Age 2. I, I, it seemed like they toned him down, it seems like. At least to me, that's what it feels like. Um, I like talking to Cassandra. I think she's pretty cool to talk to. Other than that, I'm just not interested in talking to anybody else. I mean, it, you have Liliana, but Liliana's not a party member. She's just part of the Inquisition. She's not actually in your party, which I, I thought that was kind of disappointing because she was one of your main party members in Dragon Age Origins. So when you have a game that's supposed to be based around story and dialogue and quests and characters... And you're not interested in going through with it a lot of times. It, it, I don't see how that can't be disappointing. And that's how I felt. Hell, I, I haven't even beaten the game yet. And I've put... My save file says... Uh, a little over 100 hours. I don't know if that is total playtime or if that counts like idling. I don't know because I sometimes leave my games idle. But that's what my save file says. So I've played this game quite a bit. And I just got tired of playing it and i take taken a break from it. Because I just felt so disinterested in going through all these monotonous, excuse me, these repetitive side quests. And collection quests and looting quests is just way too much in my opinion. Now, now the dragon fights are cool. I have to say the dragon fights are cool. I have not killed a dragon yet in the game, but they are really challenging, and they're really, really... They have an epic feel when you're actually fighting a dragon. But actually, that kind of brings me to another point about the game, is that the game is actually has a big difficulty spike. Now, the, and even if you put the game on normal, there are times when you just will just literally get your ass kicked. And you won't know why, because since most of the game is open up to you, you could wander into an area that you might not be ready for, but you have no idea. See, the, the wonderful thing I loved about Dragon Age Origins was that you never had to grind for anything in the game. You just pretty much played the game normally. There was no enemies that really overpowered you, because most of the time enemies leveled up with you. So there was never a time when you feel like you just get your ass handed to you. 
in this game, that can happen to you many, many times. And a lot of times I felt like I would have to sit around and level grind. Which, in, in an RPG, that's not a bad thing. But once again, that's not what Dragon Age feels like to me. It doesn't feel like Dragon Age. Or at least what I know of Dragon Age. And then there's little things like... They changed the way the health works. Your health doesn't regenerate like in the previous games. They changed the currency system to make it more streamlined for newer players. Like, I like the old Dragon Age currency system. Not, I'm not saying it was the greatest, but the reason I liked it is because it made it stand out from the other games. See, now it just feels like another game. So, but like I said, I haven't beaten the game yet. And I'm not judging the game based on the story. The story's actually not bad. But I, I just have to put it on this list because I just can't help but feel pretty disappointed with this game. Now, once again, I'd like to stress, that doesn't mean the game's bad, because it's not a bad game. I just can't help but express my disappointment, because I expected this game to be a lot more than it actually is. <sighs> you know, there is not any other game that is more deserving to take this number one spot than this game. And I am talking about WWE 2K15. My most disappointing game for 2014. Now you guys know me. I'm a big wrestling fan. And I've been playing these wrestling games since the Super Nintendo days. And one of the cool things that they added to these games eventually over time was the ability to create custom characters. So what me and my older brother used to do and we've been doing this since the Nintendo 64 days, is we would create ourselves, we would create friends, we would create family members. We would then also create fictional characters from television and movies. And we would basically create fantasy matchups and basically have our own federation. And that's all we've really been doing since they first added this feature. WWE 2K15 literally took that all away from us and stripped it down to, I don't know what the hell it is now. I really don't know what they did with this game. They took out so many goddamn things. Took out attire, just stuff, just accessories, just, they basically stripped it all away and made it really, really bare bones. For what? I have no clue. I really don't. And to give you a little example of how fun creating these these characters in these wrestling games can be. I have some videos on my channel. There's one video of me having the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles fight in a Fatal 4-Way match. There's also another video I have up of me doing a Royal Rumble and every person in that Royal Rumble is a fictional character. And that was just 30 people. I had more that I downloaded. I didn't create them myself, but I downloaded them all due to the fact that w the past couple games, you could actually go on and download other people's creations. It, to me, that gives these wrestling games a lot of replayability. Almost endless replayability because you can keep doing all these fantasy matchups. And it's just a lot of fun. And WWE 2K15 took it away. They took all that fun away. Now, I'm not saying that there is no character creation system, but it's, like I said, it's bare bones. And it seems like they want to go more of a realistic route with this game. They want to make it more of a simulator rather than just a fun, quirky game. And to be fair, the actual gameplay of the game is actually really good. I like the fact that they made it more realistic. I like the tie-up moves and the little mini-games that they have in the gameplay now. And I like how the, the moves flow. I like how if you're actually hurt in the match, 
you're actually really, really hurt and it will take you longer to recover. See, I, I like when they brought all that realism in. But did they have to take away all of the fun stuff in the game? Did they have to really do that? I don't see why. I don't see why they had to do that. And it's not just with the character creation. They took out a lot of match types. What kind of wrestling game takes out match types? I mean, can, can you explain that to me? Because there have been so many match types that have been created throughout the years. That have actually been included in the previous games, but they took them out of this game. Why? Why did they do that? It, it just boggles my mind. I, I don't get it. I don't freaking get it. And it it's not just that. Another thing that really disappointed me is how online play worked. See, this game has what's known as background matchmaking. Now, forgive me if I sound ignorant, because I've never played a game before that has background matchmaking. See, the previous WWE game had it so that if you wanted to play ranked matches, it just has regular matchmaking. But if you want to play player and custom matches, basically you search for rooms, and you enter the room, you pick your character, and then you play. So what me and my brother would do is he would create the room with the match type he wanted, he'd invite me, I'd join the room, and we'd have other people join the room, and we would play. It's pretty simple. Pretty simple multiplayer concept, in my opinion. That's not in this game. This game has background matchmaking. Which, when I saw my brother play it, it picked his character for him, and then it just started the match. Now, once again... Maybe I'm ignorant of how the multiplayer actually works. I don't know. I've only had about a half an hour experience with it. But why did they have to change it? What was wrong with the previous games? Matchmaking. What was wrong with it? Can someone answer me that? I don't know. See, I I'm up for the philosophy is if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And there was nothing wrong with the matchmaking of the previous game. You want to know what was wrong with the previous game? There was numerous bugs and glitches, like the frozen body glitch, where all of a sudden a wrestler during a match will just freeze. Whether they're mid-move, or they're about to be hit with something, they just freeze. And there's no way to fix it. The match has to end, either with the match actually ending, or if you actually ending the match yourself, through the menus. See, see, and then of course body parts getting stuck in ropes, cages... Stuff like that. See, that stuff is the stuff that needs to be fixed. And you should have seen my face when I saw the frozen body glitch on the next-gen version of WWE 2K15 on the PS4. When I saw that, I was like, they didn't fix a damn thing. So not only did they strip away a lot of the stuff I loved about wrestling games, they didn't even fix the issues that really need to be addressed with the game at all. And I'm sorry, but at this point, these kind of stuff should not be happening. It really should not be happening. And you know what really is really telling about this? The wrestling games is one of the main games my brother picks up every year. And that he plays throughout the year. And he only trades in the game about a week or two before the newer game comes out. Like, for example, he traded in WWE 2K14 about a couple weeks before 2K15 came out on PS4. Within four days of him getting this game, he traded it in and got Grand Theft Auto V Remastered. I'm sorry, but that should tell you something. That should really tell you how disappointed we were with this game. So, yeah, there really isn't another game that could top my list more than this game. Now, another thing I'd like to point out is a lot of some people have stated that they 
had limitations with this game and that they had to take some of the stuff out and that the next game will be even better because this is like a starting point for what the series can become. You know, I'm sorry. I don't know why they had to take out a lot of the stuff they did. I, I would like to see an accurate reason as to why they did that. But not only that, I'm paying 60 bucks for a game. If I'm paying 60 bucks for a game, it needs to be a full game. I don't pay for a game that has potential. I don't pay for a game that's like a trial version of what the game could be. And I definitely sure as hell don't pay for a game that's an empty shell of its former self. I don't pay for that. I'm not interested in paying 60 bucks for stuff like that. And, and you know what? This game actually has foreshadowing, in my opinion. Because if you look at the cover of this game, who's on the cover? None other than Mr. Bland and Boring himself, John Cena. You look at some of the previous covers of the game in previous years, the design's cool, it's got actual cool wrestlers on it, the colors are nice and bright and they stick out. Look at the cover of this game. Really bland, really boring, really basic, and then it's got John Cena on the cover. So there's some foreshadowing there. There's some foreshadowing there that should have been a warning to whoever bought this game. And I'm sure as hell I'm glad I did not spend 60 bucks for this game because my gut was telling me, because I was telling my brother, look, you pay for it, I'll come over, we'll mess around with it, if I end up liking it, then, and if it ends up being good, then I may pick it up later. I sure as hell am glad I did not waste my money on this game because, you know... What the hell were you thinking, 2K? What the hell were you thinking? So, alright. Those were my most disappointing games for the year of 2014. Let me know if you agree, disagree. Just let me know your thoughts down below. And I will see you all next time. Here's to a hopefully awesome gaming year of 2015. Alright, have a good one.